Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. This is the third video on the Python series. If you haven't watched the first two, feel free to go back and watch them. This is the um, follow up to the previous video about lists where we're going to do some more um, computer oriented things with lists, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, really advanced lists, which is in the Python crash course, the, the next chapter. So just to just to be clear, I'm not covering everything that's in the book. I'm not covering everything that's in every chapter. For that, you have to read the book. I'm just going over some of the points that I think are important. And if uh, necessary, I can always go back and cover more of them later on. So to get started, um, last time we created a, <clears throat> a list with names in it. And the names we used were Rob, Gus, Millie and K. And if I wanted to print those out, I could print either the full thing and do names. And if I uh, print that out, I get all, all four of those names. I can also print one of the names. Um, and I'll use the positional or index to this time. And if you remember, that will print out the third item in the list because it's zero, one, two. So uh, we did that, uh, printed all of them, or we could go through and individually and it, you know, it's not all that efficient to say four print statements, zero, one, two, three, four, if we wanted to do that. So what we can do is um, use something called a loop. And this is you know, really getting into the strength of computers, repeating and doing the same thing over and over again, because it doesn't matter if it's uh, four times or a thousand times or whatever, uh, we can just let the, let the computer do a command and say, do that again and do that again. So to do a for loop, I am going to, let's get rid of this statement. I say for, name in names. Now we'll talk about this in a little bit, but what I'm saying is this for every time we have an entry in names, we're going to put that into the variable name. Now they don't have to be related and we'll see that in a minute, but what I'm going to do now is when I hit enter, it automatically indents. I have a, a colon at the end. We'll talk about that and confirm that's there. We have an indentation and now I can print whatever is in that variable name. And what it'll do um, when I run the program, I still have the original print names. So print names is this one here, but then it individually prints all of the names. Um, and that's really useful because we can do something with each name, you know, whatever we want to do. So that is a for loop and that is really, you know, the, the power of a computer. So now let's move on here. Um, just to reinforce that, I don't have to call this um, anything that's related to names. I can call it X uh, as just a generic variable if I wanted, and it, uh, it acts exactly the same way. The reason we use something like names is the name for names is just to be clear about what we're doing. Um, you know, that just explains what we're doing. The item, the, 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 the list is called names, so we're just gonna say it's an individual item from names. We understand what that means from plural and singular. So uh, the name variable is used to help people understand humans. Computer doesn't care. I could have used grandparent as my variable name. I could have said for grandparent in names. Uh, I'm going to print out grandparent. So now when I run that, same results. So um, now this might be obvious or maybe it's not. And let's go back and switch it to name just for consistency. And I don't have to just print out the name all by itself. I could say I want to print out name and I want to have uh, let's, oops, I hit enter 
I'm going to have a quote and then I will do plus name. And what I can do is now uh, save that and it says name in front of it. Now, if you look at this and you say, wait, shouldn't there be a space there? That's where I can put that there. And sometimes as you're doing this, you say, well, I don't like the way that looks when it's when the result is produced. So I'm going to modify my output, kind of clean things up. The other thing is, if you notice the indentation, we have a tab here. Now, what happens with the loop is it will keep doing the loop inside for every time you have the tab. It's only when you get rid of the tab that it ends the loop and does the next thing. So um, that's the indentation. And in a prior video, I actually made a mistake where I hit an enter key and a compute, or I had a, I had a space and it said unexpected indentation. Um, Python wants to use, uses indentation to determine what lines are part of what things. So I can now say, uh, I have the, the name um, line that I'm printing. Now I can print out another line and, and that can be included in the loop. And I'll say was not in the movie Star Wars. Um, so now when I run that, each time I print out that name, I get the line was not in the movie Star Wars because it's indented. Now, um, when I end the indentation, that's when it completes the loop. And that's where we are back to saying, okay, now we're just running through each line in the program. So I can say print, um, that is all of my list. Um, and I can do, uh, I can save and run it. And now it goes through, Rob was not in the movie Star Wars, Gus was not in the movie Star Wars, Millie was not in the movie Star Wars, so on. And at the end, that is all of my list. Now, if I made a mistake and I got rid of the indentation there, doesn't matter if it's a line up, it is only going to do this line once because it loops through each of these, it goes through each name and names, and then when it's done with that, it goes to the next line. So if I have my tab there, that works the way you would expect. Now, if I made a mistake and said, you know what, I have, I'm gonna put my tab here. Now, what will happen, and you might be able to predict, is it does, that is all of my list after each line, which is probably not what I'm looking for. And to, just to make it a little more clear, I can comment this out. If you remember, we can do that. I can just print out each name and say, name Rob. But then it says that is all of my list, which clearly it's not because it moves on to the next one and the next one and the next one. So recognizing where the indentation happens and what you do with that, that's really important. Um, now, if I move forward from here, you can cause all kinds of problems by indenting improperly. That's what I was just showing you a little bit of. Some of them will be syntax errors. So um, it'll give you an error, something's not right. But some will be logic errors. It didn't produce an error when I did this, but clearly, or you know, based on my mind, clearly that's not what I wanted it to happen. I don't want it to say, that is all of my list at the end of that for loop. Uh, or at the end of each item. I want to say it at the end of the for loop. So that's where I have an error in indentation. Um, and this is what I would want it to look like. Indenting tells Python that one loader line of code is connected to another. And if you indent, indent where you're not supposed to, or don't indent where you are supposed to, uh, you're doing indenting improperly, and that's going to cause a problem. Now, another thing we could say is, let's say I comment out this. Now I don't have a for loop anymore. Um, I'm going to try to do that. It's you know, not going to work anyway. But um, what I'm doing is saying name names and I'm printing that. And if I do F5 on that, I get an unexpected indent because it doesn't see the line before that would give me the indentation. So go back here. Uh, now, here's another logic error we can have. I am doing for name and names and then I'm printing that, but I'm printing out names. And you, hopefully you can kind of see where this is going. This is gonna produce unexpected results. 
Um, actually, it produces an error uh, because it is saying I can't concatenate a list into a string. Um, so, you know, if I got rid of this part here, then I get the kind of unexpected result that I was 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 expecting, where it prints out the full list each time. So, just you have to recognize what's happening and why it's happening. Um, and sometimes uh, you'll get errors where you don't expect them. Sometimes you'll get errors where or no error, and but it won't do what you want. And that's where kind of verifying you're doing what you want is really important. Idle, uh, even, so as we go through, I don't know if you noticed, uh, I print names and I'm indented and I hit enter and I have, that indentation is still there. Um, most text editors, you know, I say I didn't try other text editors, almost every development environment you work in will do the same thing. It will always say you are in a loop or you are in a block of code that needs to be indented. So I'm going to keep indenting. And when you want to end the indentation, um, and even if I go here and hit enter, you see how it's indented. When you want to end it, if I go to the end of the line and I'm ready to do that, I need to backspace out of it. So that is the, the for loop. Um, there's one more really important part of the for loop. And that is this colon right here. If you don't have the colon, it doesn't work properly. So this will produce some kind of syntax error. It ex And it even, in this case, warns you, hey, I expected a colon at the end of a for loop. So I can put my colon back. Um, it tells Python that what you're, that what follows is part of the loop. Easy to miss when you're trying to find an error, although it's really obvious here um, because it told me, it expected a colon there. There are other times you might not realize or might forget and you know you run through. This is why, especially if you're doing longer things, try to break them into smaller pieces. We will get into part of that later on, but you break it into smaller pieces, you work on one piece at a time, you see if it works, and then you can kind of build on that. One other item of note, if you work in other programming languages at all, frequently they are semicolons. A colon is the two dots, the semicolon is the uh, dot with a line under it, or the dot with the comma under it. That's common in um, in Linux configuration files, in uh, C programming language. So just be aware of that, that we're, what we're looking at here is a colon by itself. So it's shift and the colon key. Um, so we're still there. We still have everything working the way we expect. Um, and you know what? I looking at this, I just don't like the way it looks because it has a lot. It has a word, and then it has was not in the movie Star Wars. I really think they should be part of the same line. So what I'm going to do is just do this, and I'll do a plus, and doesn't really change anything. Um, and I want to do a lowercase because I'm going to give a name, and I want to say it was not in the movie Star Wars, and I will give and leave a problem that's going to bother me. Um, I don't like Rob was, I like having a space there. So, okay, I'll go back and fix that. And I do F5 and Rob was not in the movie Star Wars. Gus was not in the movie Star Wars. Now, and while we're at it, this was used for testing earlier. I'm just going to comment this out. And at this point, I don't have extra stuff running on my program. I've, you know, kind of finished and cleaned it up. I have Rob was not in the movie Star Wars. Gus was not. Millie K. Um, realistically, the only thing that bothers me is the lowercase uh, at the beginning of each name. And there are things we could do to fix that. Not going to worry about that right now. Um, obviously, I could go into the uh, into the list and change the capitalization there, or I can use certain functions to do that. And um, that's something, if necessary or if we want to, we can go back to that later on and talk about different ways of fixing variables or doing things with variables that you want. So now let's do a lab. And in this case, we're going to create a list and we'll start over. Uh, let's see, we can get rid of all of this. And it's saying uh, create a list with 10 names and it can be cookies or cars or beer or whatever is important to you. 
Um, if you can come up with 10 varieties of squirrels, that's great. So whenever you want, create a list of 10 of them. Print the name of each item in the list using a for loop, just like we did. Uh, include some kind of description. So I can say the best cookies are vanilla sandwich. The best cookies are black and white. Um, so uh, that is a lot like what I just did. And then finish the line, final line with uh, something that's not part of the loop. So go ahead and try to do that. If you've been following along, this should be pretty straightforward and easy. Um, and we'll take a break. And while I'm doing that, I'll fill out a, a list so we can come back and start working on my example of this. Okay, and I'm back and I created a list of cookies. Now, the thing is, I didn't actually create a list of 10 cookies because I was, uh, you know, running out of creativity and didn't want to distract myself and make myself want to stop the video and go eat, eat cookies. So what I did is I created a list of cookies. I, I want to see how many I, I, I did. So I'm going to print um, uh, Lane and cookies and now I'm trying to remember the exact format of this command so let's see if I got that right and I did I I put eight, I put eight cookies in my list not quite ten pretty close um, just wanted to see this and this is something we did in the previous video where we had we used the len uh, function to figure out how many items were in the list and there are times when that can be really handy um, Theoretically, if I wanted to say, pick a random number and pick out a random cookie, right now I could say, print, uh, get me my length, and that is the range that I need my random number to be within. Or I could use um, a modulus, I could pick a random number between one and a thousand and do a modulus to figure out, and to get a remainder between uh, one and eight. So these are all things I could use this for. Um, later on, we'll go through, uh, uh, a lab where I create uh, where we guess random numbers and I did something with length in that um, so for now we'll follow the directions here print out the name of each item in the list using a for loop and if you remember for and I'm gonna do cookie in cookies and now I need that colon at the end that's really important and I'm going to now um, before I get into descriptive text, I'm just going to see if this works. Print, and I'm going to do cookie. So to follow that up, um, well, I'll just run this and see what happens. And if everything works, I'll get my full list of cookies. And I got my full list of cookies. So the next step is let's make the output look a little bit better. And I'm going to say, uh, I'll put a quote in front of this. And uh, in my example, the best cookies are colon. And I want to now close my quote, do a plus. Um, now, if you look at my list, um, do I want to say plus? and I'll do cookies here. Okay, so now did that work? Let's give that a try. If I do a five, I get the best cookies are, and you know what? I don't like the colon there because I just created a sentence by putting cookies at the end. Let's try it again. Uh, the best cookies are vanilla sandwich cookies. The best cookies are chocolate chip cookies. The best cookies are oatmeal cookies. So now I'm actually coming up with some kind of repeating pattern. Um, for every item in the list. And if I go up here and add another item, um, and I can't think of one right now, um, but if I came up with another item, I could add it in here, uh, and I'll just say plain, plain cookies. Um, and now I have plain cookies in my list. And going back, if I did that length command again, I would get nine because I just added one. So the other thing in here is say, uh, at the end, I wanna finish up, uh, finish the final line that is not part of the cookies. So I'm gonna say, um, 
print. Uh, I love cookies. And if I do F5, I print, I get all of my res results there and then I, I get, I love cookies. Um, so I think I want to do one more bonus lab before we end the video. So let's just reset everything. And what I'm going to do is do something with numbers. So I'm going to do numbers and one, two, three, four, five. I just put five numbers in my list and four number in numbers. I'm going to say um, my, I'm going to do an output number. I'm going to call, I'll do output num equals number times, I'm trying to think of what kind of math I feel like doing. I'll just do number time two. And then I can do a print output number. Actually, let's do, let's start with print output number. Um, output num, and let's see what happens. So F5 on that, and I get two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Uh, so now I could go in and say, um, instead of displaying it like this, I want to display and explain what I did. The original number is, and then I'll do a close quote plus and do number, except remember it needs to be a turned into a string. And if it would produce an error if I didn't, it is number. Um, and then I'll do, and there are other ways to do this, but this is always the way that I learned and did it. Uh, so the original number is that. Uh, doubled it, it, doubled it is, and then I'll do a quote and close and then plus and put a string on my output number. So let's see how that looks the original number is one doubled it's two the original number is two doubled it is four three six that looks good that kind of we can do numbers we can do multiple things with numbers let's say i wanted to do um i wanted to square the number i could do number uh equals number times number or there are other ways to do squares so i can do whatever i want um in here and I could have a whole long list of commands that I'm running in here that are all related. I'm doing calculations. This is kind of like uh, when we converted Celsius to Fahrenheit. I could go through and do that here. I could have a, a function that does that or I could have a, just an individual command that does that and feed in a whole bunch of uh, temperatures in Celsius. So we can do whatever we want once we get into that loop, repeat it over and over and at the end we can say uh, now I'm done. So now I go here, I get it out of my indent and print. Now I am done. And, and with that, I'm going to say now I'm done. Uh, so that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.